Hello, my name is Chester Chambers here at the Cary Business School at Johns Hopkins University. We just wanted to give you a little bit of background information about the use of discrete event simulation in some process improvement activities that are going on here at the Medical Center at Johns Hopkins. The process essentially begins with the role of our uh, assistant here uh, who is gathering data regarding discrete events that take place within the clinic. A discrete event is something like when a patient enters a room, exits a room, the physician enters a room, exits the room, the patient begins the check-in process, ends the check-in process, and so on. So she is literally recording these times in using paper and pencil here sitting within the clinic. Right now she's facing out toward the front desk so that she can record the times that a patient walks up to the desk, walks away from the desk, and so on. She is also positioned at a point where she can recognize all four of the examination rooms uh, so that she can constantly talk about uh, when a patient enters or exits a room and so on. That data is then taken and translated into an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, so the detail of that is shown here. So for each case that each attending physician deals with, we record the type of case. A consult is a new visit. Uh, there are also returning visits uh, and so on. Uh, the detail time data is recorded here and those times can be used or differences between those times can be used to figure out the times of particular steps such as registration, uh, the time the resident spends uh, with that case, the time the attending spent with that case and so on and then those figures can be used to calculate things like processing times, waiting times, etc. Now most process analysis projects sort of begin and end with this style of analysis we wanted to do something a bit more sophisticated. So what we did was we took those times and we then translated them into uh, random variables which could be used to mimic those activity times. So here we're showing the time involved in the registration step when the patient first comes into the clinic. Uh, we've accumulated data on hundreds of cases which uh, we could then turn into a simple histogram of those times and then we do a bit of analysis to create beta distributed random variables which will serve as proxies for those uh, actual activity times. We choose the parameters of the variables so that we match the means and the variances and the ranges of the actual times and then this data uh, the, the distribution parameters can be used as inputs to a discrete event simulation. This particular simulation was built using some software known as uh, Extend Sim. There is specialty software available for modeling uh, uh, medical services. Uh, we decided to, to go with a more sort of uh, off the shelf kind of product uh, which was sufficient for our purposes and we already had some experience with. So I'm going to go ahead and run this simulation here just a bit to give you a sense of what's going on here. Uh, in this setting we have three different types of patients. We have some patients who are coming in for a return visit uh, to, see the, to see the attending physician. We have other patients here that will work their way through who are simply coming in to see the PA, physician's assistant. And we have some patients who are coming on a first time consult who need to see the attending physician. And uh, let me speed this up here a little bit. Uh, and so what we're showing here is the simulation of a four-hour clinic session. At the end of this run of, for this clinical session, we will be able to look at the cycle times for every patient that was on the schedule. For this particular setting, we've got 17 patients on the schedule. And at the end of this run, we'll be able to look at the cycle times, the waiting times, uh, and so on for every patient on that schedule. Using simulation allows us to do a number of things. For example, we can play around with the resource levels within the clinic, the number of rooms, the number of residents, the number of attending positions, and so on. We can also gather a wide variety of process metrics, uh, cycle times, uh, waiting times, utilization levels of the resources involved, and so on. Now, this approach where you look at a single four-hour clinic session will give you some idea of what's going on within the clinic. You can see uh, where jobs uh, back up. You can see uh, if people are ever waiting in the queue. Uh, you can get some sense of how many jobs are in the system at the same time and that sort of thing. Uh, 
However, just looking at a single clinical session will give you some preliminary data, but it doesn't give you a full understanding of the distribution of outcomes that you are likely to see. So here in a moment we'll see that we finished uh, running this for one clinical session. We will have 17 different cycle times for the 17 different patients on the, on the schedule. Uh, and again, so you can use that data from a single simulation to give you some sense of what's going on. What we're going to do here is I'm going to turn the animation off to speed things up a bit. And we're going to let this run for a while. So instead of just looking at a single clinical session, we're going to look at the results after a thousand clinical sessions. The reason we do that is we don't know a priori what the distribution of waiting times or cycle times is going to be. But we do know just from the central limit theorem that the distribution of the average waiting times, the distribution of the average cycle times, the distribution of the average utilization levels is going to be normally distributed. And so we can use discrete event simulation to run through whatever number of clinical sessions we want to look at. And the reason you do that is so that the confidence interval on your predictions of average values is monotonically decreasing in the number of clinical sessions that you consider. So by considering a large number of clinical sessions, you are able to get that confidence interval down uh, as low as you like so that you can get statistically significant results uh, comparing uh, cycle times in one scenario as opposed to another. To get this much data from a single attending physician who may only be in clinic one or two days a week would take you literally several years uh, to amass this amount of data and it's simply impossible to hold all other variables constant over that length of time. Uh, using this sort of hybrid approach, what we are able to do is gather processing time information over a much shorter duration, say a month or two, to get uh, ideas of what the distributions of activity times are. Once we have those distributions in place, then we can combine that information with uh, discrete event simulation uh, to get these kinds of results. Uh, just as an example of what you can do with this type of uh, approach, uh, I'm going to take some data here from the simulation itself. Uh, here we're looking at the number of patients completed uh, by the, the scheduled end of the clinical session and the actual completion time. I'm going to copy that data. Uh, I can then bring that over to my spreadsheet and I can uh, pretty literally uh, uh, paste that in if I like. Uh, so here I'll paste in these observations. Uh, so what I've just done is we've just recorded uh, observations from a thousand different simulated clinical sessions and what's uh, nice about that is I don't have to just speak in terms of uh, average utilizations, average waiting times, average number of uh, uh, patients done by noon and so on. I actually have the entire distribution uh, to do with whatever sort of analysis I want to do with that type of information. So again this was just to give you an introduction to this style of research where we combine an actual implementation in the, in the clinic uh, and then we supplement that with some, some uh, discrete event simulation uh, to get more robust uh, results and analysis. Uh, and again, this is Chester Chambers at the Carey Business School here at Johns Hopkins and we thank you for your time.